how do we do this? Um, in this part, part three, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to tell you about how to conduct a community brainstorming session in just five easy steps. Um, and the brainstorming session is going to be really about um, an outdoor event connected to your library. So the first thing we're going to start with is selecting a site to brainstorm about. Um, then we're going to identify key stakeholders and partners. Then we're going to prepare for the session, conduct the session in a fun and productive and engaging way, and record and share the results. So selecting a site, um, obviously um, in most cases you're going to be focusing on sites that are part of your library or right outside the library door, uh, but sometimes you may want to take your activities into an area that has the potential to connect the library to other important community places, for example, outside of City Hall or next to the community college, or in a empty park that has been underutilized for a while and it's close by. So the best sites are really sites that need some help, um, that have potential to become better, that have potential to connect the library to other important community places, that can get people excited, um, Ideally, there would be a number of partners and stakeholders around these sites. And finally, um, there should be sites that are relatively easy for people to get to. So for example, um, it could be the library lawn, or um, as we've done in the past, we've used the library parking lot, or sometimes even the parking lot of an adjacent institution. Um, an underused park um, would be a great option as well, or the park or plaza near City Hall, or parks, plazas, even parking lots near, near other community spaces or destinations, the college, the school, the cultural center, City Hall. So destinations that actually help connect the library both physically and programmatically to um, the rest of the community. So identifying key stakeholders and partners is one of the most important steps in the placemaking or brainstorming process because we want to have the right people at the meeting. And of course, we want to start with library staff. Uh, but we also want to get other library clients involved, uh, library friends groups, groups if those exist, um, teen councils or other youth representatives. Um, definitely we want to involve someone from the municipality or city hall. Um, existing community groups, representatives of existing community groups. If the space is a park, the local parks department should probably be involved. And then um, in terms of partnerships, it is important to invite local cultural groups or organizations uh, because they're the people who can help us build the program and help us put a great event together. So um, youth is good to be involved, whether it's through local schools or colleges or through teen councils and similar youth organizations. Sometimes food vendors and en entrepreneurs make great partners, uh, local artists as well. So the list you see is a list of typical stakeholders and in your particular situation you may have different ideas or you may feel like this list is too big and you just need um, a smaller group of people or you may have even more people to add to the list. Uh, but the point is these are the people that not only are going to help you brainstorm ideas but they're going to help make your ideas a reality. So um, from that perspective, the more the merrier. You can't do it alone, and you shouldn't. Preparing for the brainstorming session. Um, the first step would be, obviously, to select a site to brainstorm about, um, reserve a meeting space, 
set a di- date, time, assemble an agenda for the meeting, select and invite participants, and then um, organize any additional equipment. Um, and we will go through a short checklist that goes into the little details of what that may look like. But the first part of preparing, obviously, for the brainstorming session is inviting people. And there are many ways, of course, to reach out to people and invite them. Um, This is an example of a flyer that was used for a placemaking brainstorming session. But whether you use a flyer, uh, an email, or better yet, a personal phone call, um, you want to spread the word out and invite your stakeholders. So here's preparing for the brainstorming session. Here's our little checklist. We hope you're going to use it in preparing for your brainstorming session. And the first element on that checklist is making sure that your meeting room, which, by the way, should be big enough to um, accommodate all the guests that you've invited, even if not all of them have RSVP'd yet. Um, So your meeting room should be near the selected site. And the reason we want this is because um, we recommend, if you have time and if the weather permits, to actually go outside in the site and just spend a few minutes looking and evaluating the site before you begin your brainstorming session. So the meeting room should be near the selected site. Um, You should prepare an agenda for the session. You should make copies of the brainstorming questionnaire. Um, We're going to talk about this questionnaire um, in a little bit more detail further in this training. Uh, We recommend that you give each participant a questionnaire. Especially in the case of a site that may not be people may not be familiar familiar with, we recommend that you prepare base maps. Um, today, getting a Google Map or a Google Earth Map is very simple. So prepare a base map uh, with your site circled and labeled, and give each participant a map so they can orient themselves. Um, prepare a flip chart so you can record the discussion. Flip charts are kind of a tool of the trade. Um, we know there's many different ways of recording. People record directly on their computer. There is audio equipment that can help recording. But the goal of the flip chart and the reason we want the flip chart as big as possible and we want to write in large letters on the flip chart is that It confirms everybody's ideas, and it helps people see their ideas recorded and reflected back. So the flip chart is actually an important element of a brainstorming session and getting everybody um, comfortable and everybody feeling like their ideas matter. We also recommend that you um, prepare a few people to be facilitators of Um, the discussion. So um, in general, we like to have discussion in small groups. So we recommend that a small group not exceed eight participants. And the reason for that is not because there is some magic to the number eight, but because in larger, in groups that are larger than eight or ten people, not everybody Uh, we'll get a chance to speak. So our goal is to assemble everyone in a larger group, in a larger convening workshop brainstorming session, and then break the participants into smaller groups of four to eight people and then have discussions in smaller groups. So everybody gets a chance to speak, everybody gets a chance to express themselves, everybody gets a chance to participate. And because of that, we recommend that we have each group should have a facilitator. And we'll talk a little bit more about the role of the facilitator. And facilitator may be a little bit of a big word for it. Maybe they're more like moderators or monitors who make sure that everything is going smoothly. And then, of course, we need um, the little things that make a, a workshop work, uh, markers, pens, 
snacks are a very good idea. Um, people like food, and food makes everything better, whether it's in a meeting context or in a public space context. Uh, putting fo food out is usually a sure way of seeding a place with activity. So here is a sample agenda for our brainstorming session. And this agenda um, is for a session that would take about two hours, two to two and a half hours to conduct. Um, as in any meeting, we recommend starting with introductions. If it's a large meeting, more than 10, 10 or 15 people, we recommend that you skip the self-introduction part just because with um, 20 people, self-introductions can take 20 and more min minutes, and that would eat into your brainstorming time. So uh, for large meetings, we recommend just the conveners to introduce themselves, and then the introductions, self-introductions can happen in the small groups. So the first step would be for everybody to introduce themselves. The next step would be to review the objectives of the brainstorming session and the agenda. And then um, if you're so inclined and you have um, the capacity and the equipment to do that, you could review with your group um, of stakeholders examples from um, the previous part of this training, part two, of great places and the elements that make them, just to get people's imagination and ideas going. After reviewing examples, um, if there is more than eight participants in your uh, brainstorming session, we recommend that you divide participants into groups and each group should have no more than eight people. And then the small groups should go and visit the site for about 10 to 20 minutes um, and just walk around the site, um, get out the door, take a look, um, and then return to the meeting room and brainstorm ideas and respond to the questions in the questionnaire as a group, um, which typically would take about another 20, 25 minutes, and then each group gets to report back their ideas and their findings. And the final um, element of the agenda would be some closing remarks and outlining next steps, um, what's going to happen next and where are these ideas going to go and who is going to um, implement them. So back to our facilitators and larger groups. Um, we think it's very important to have someone who is in charge of each small group. So in facilitators, really, their role is to make sure that people understand what they're doing. Everybody on the team has a chance to speak, and no one dominates, including the facilitator. And uh, to really lead the discussion without necessarily rephrasing what people are saying, just to make sure that people go through the questions and can answer them. So um, once the facilitator and his group convene, um, everybody should introduce themselves. Um, people should go quickly through the questions mentally by themselves before reading the questions together as a group. Uh, one person should be assigned to be um, the recorder of the discussion who would write down everybody's comments on a no notepad or a piece of paper. And then a timekeeper uh, should be assigned who will make sure that the group moves through the site and th the questions and returns to the meeting location on time. The facilitator um, is also responsible to uh, make sure that the group stays on track and keeps moving through the questions. And um, if people get hung up on answering one question, prompt them to move on um, and go through the entire questionnaire as much as possible. And then the facilitator 
themselves or someone they assign to should summarize the ideas from the discussion on a flip chart to present to the entire brainstorming session group. Uh, one or two people should be presenting the summary of the ideas to the whole workshop. And then at the end of the workshop, um, the facilitator is responsible with collecting completed forms and notes from people so they can all become part of the record. So here's a photo from um, a very similar session, a community brainstorming session at a library. And you can see um, people are sitting in their little groups and someone is presenting. And um, it's really about having a conversation and, um, and a brainstorming session that is very focused on specific questions. And we're going to get to the questions next. So here's the brainstorming questionnaire that um, we have been using with Redbox and um, the Outside the Box program and we recommend you use for your session. But um, of course, you um, should feel free to add other questions to this questionnaire or other relevant elements that you may want to discuss with your stakeholders and um, brainstorming session participants. So the first question is about uses and activities. Um, and it's about the events or activities that would compel you, the participant, and a group of fr family or friends to come and spend time at this location. And we have some prompts, movies, concerts, art, festival, etc. And the idea for this question is that we want stakeholders to approach this as um, regular citizens, even if they're people who may have special knowledge. They may be designers, planners, um, event organizers, park staff. We really want them to kind of take off their work hat and um, approach the space as a regular user. So think about themselves, their friends, their family, and what would attract them to use the space or attend this event. The next question is about existing communities, community programs that could be hosted or featured at this location. So question number two is really getting their professional opinion and knowledge out there. And oftentimes we find that um, People in communities know a lot about existing programs, so we you don't necessarily have to be an expert on programming or parks department staff or library staff to know what else is going on in the community. And you may um, be surprised at the variety and um, curiosity of events that um, happen in sometimes in public spaces and sometimes in doors that may be looking for a new venue. So this is really um, a question that's prompting partners to volunteer or uh, participants to think about what other programs could be hosted in this location so you don't have to start everything from scratch and you don't have to do it alone. Question number three is about sociability. And it's about thinking and asking the groups to think about specific audiences that should be attracted. Um, for example, youth or seniors or families with kids or teens or um, Spanish speakers or other um, non-English language speakers or bicyclists or kids that are interested in skateboarding. There are so many different groups that could be listed here, and you should really encourage people to kind of run with it and, um, and think about audiences that may not be typical audiences for a library event. It's a great opportunity to do that. Uh, the next section is um, comfort and image. So it's really um, three questions about 
making the space more functional and more comfortable. So the first question, question number four is, what would make this place more comfortable and inviting? And you want people in this question to think about seating and shade and possibly climate control and landscaping. So it's really about the things that make use comfortable. Um, whether it's chairs or benches or tables or pillows or hammocks, people come up with a lot of interesting ideas. Um, question number five is about the furnishings that would support the activity. So some of it is about comfort and feeling invited, but some of it here is really about what would make that program happen. So if we're talking about a concert or a movie, outdoor movie screening, this is the place to talk about stage or um, PA system or a projector or all these little things that may be needed. And um, people may or may not, everything that is involved in producing an event, so um, it's it's just about being mindful of the requirements of the specific events. And we find that communities are very sophisticated and actually understand very well what is needed to make them comfortable and support their activities. And then the final question, question number six in this section, the comfort and image section, is about thinking of um, how the place and the event could reflect local traditions or customs or culture or local art. So it's really about thinking of elements that could really make this event feel special and authentic and local and connected to your particular community and to your particular place. Um, the following section, question number seven, is a section about long-term changes. And the reason we we understand that you're not planning um, a long-term event or a long-term in intervention, but it's really about using uh, the opportunity of having a group of smart, engaged people in the room and um, capturing any ideas that may be um, created and brainstormed in this session about longer, more lasting improvements to the space. So the question is about lasting improvements um, that could be done to the space in the long term. And then last but not least, and it's actually one of the most important questions in this questionnaire, it's the section about partnerships. And it's question number eight, what local groups, partners, talent could help implement the activities outlined um, in your form. So this is a question where we really want participants to be as specific as possible. So um, we want to know about specific groups and organizations that may already be organizing similar types of events or events that could be co-located here. We want to know about um, the local high school band or the local friends group that are already organizing events and could really help both support but also enhance this event and become more visible and present in the community. So the next step of our brainstorming session is to record and share the results of the session. So what we um, recommend is that you use the flip charts to um, compile a record of the results and the ideas and um, type them up, um, collect them in a very simple way, and make sure to share them with all the participants. And the reason um, we want to um, distribute the record to participants and share with them is because in a way, um, this record is also their commitment to the event. It's also a really good starting point um, for a discussion of, after this big 
brainstorming session, figuring out what is feasible, what is realistic, what you have resources for, what other organizations and groups may have resources for and may be able to help. So sharing the results is a very important step of the brainstorming process. And then finally, we um, encourage you to select an event from your uh, brainstorming session and start working on it. Reach out to partners, um, develop some of these ideas and findings, select the best ones, and then implement. Um, working through the event selection process um, is usually fun, and we recommend that you do it with as many partners as possible and you don't just do it internally because um, the more people are involved in the process, the more invested they are and the more likely they are to help out and participate and promote and invite other people to be part of it. And that's the ultimate goal.